Hey, it's Tom and Mike from Take Time to Travel. During our three months in Cartagena, Colombia, we tried lots of amazing restaurants, as well as some delicious street food, beautiful rooftops, and lively bars. Today, we're going to take you on a Cartagena food tour to show you some of the best options the city has to offer. We'll start with an upscale Colombian eatery called Alma Restaurante for a dinner reservation. We sat in their luxurious main dining room, which featured a high wooden beam ceiling. And shortly after we were seated, we were served a complimentary bread basket. Then Mike ordered a coconut lemonade, and I chose a Club Columbia beer to drink. For our mains, I had the sole of coqui with shrimps and coconut milk, creamy clavel rice with local cheese, smoked sausage, coconut oil, pesto, avocado, and sweet plantain. And Tom decided on the creamy mushroom rice with oxtail, which was slow braised and served with cherry tomato confit. Both were incredible, but Tom actually preferred the shrimp dish, and my favorite was the oxtail. After that, we shared the coconut snooky with three milk sponge cake with different coconut textures, ice cream, biscuit, meringue foam, fresh coconut, and organic mint. This also tasted delectable and reminded us of a coconut cream pie, but way better. Next, we'll show you one of the top rated restaurants in Latin America called Salele. Inside has a nice stone wall and a rustic wooden beam ceiling, as well as a cozy light filled back area where we were seated. To start, we had a couple of Club Columbia beers to drink. Then we were served some complimentary cassava bread with sesame butter. For our appetizer, we shared the Caribbean flower salad, which included edible flowers, cashew nut cream, pickled cucumber, roasted cashew nuts, honey, and fresh greens, as well as a dressing made with emperor's cane flour and passion fruit. It was almost too pretty to eat, but it didn't take long for Mike to make a mess of it. This was our first time having a flower salad, and it was delicious, with a creamy cashew flavor. Then for my main dish, I chose the poda squid and mussels escabeche costeño style, with a mussel broth reduction, choclo corn, and plantain dumplings. Tom decided to get their specialty, the salele style pork, which was explained in detail, and included pork confit terrine, mashed guineo paso, preserved sweet peppers, Caribbean beans with chives, and fresh cabbage and was finished by our server pouring pork broth around the bowl and adding drops of sweet pepper oil. It had a beautiful presentation. My meal was good, but Tom's was definitely the winner. It was one of our favorite dishes that we had during our whole stay in Colombia. We can see why Salele is so highly rated, but let's keep going on our Cartagena food tour. The next spot is an amazing Caribbean restaurant called Sierpe Caribe Fusion. We went for an early lunch at this little eatery and started with a couple of Club Columbia beers to drink. Then we shared the Sierpe ceviche with fish, shrimp, calamari, creamy house leche de tigre, avocado, quinoa, and crunchy plantain. It looked wonderful, but it was recommended to mix everything together. Then for our mains, we shared the fried fish and coconut sauce with creamy coconut rice, patacones and fresh salad, as well as the crab rice made with a typical Cartagena recipe of coconut rice with crab and vegetables. We also had the creamy rice with shrimp and Spanish sausage, and the Sierpe fillet with shrimp, smoked red bell pepper sauce, and mashed white yam. Everything was outstanding, but our favorites were the Sierpe fillet, the fried fish, and the Sierpe ceviche. While you're in Hetsemani, check out this incredibly lively party street called Calle 28. It has an energetic atmosphere, with many restaurants and bars that have patios sprawling out into the narrow laneway, with lots of lights and decorations hanging overhead. Any one of these patios would be a wonderful place to stop and grab a drink. So we decided to try this one called Alos Chingadazos, which gave us a front row seat to all the action, and we ordered a couple of Club Columbia beers as usual. We really enjoyed the exciting vibe on Calle 28, and would definitely recommend a visit. It even got Tom in the dancing mood. Check out those moves. Another popular venue in Hetsemane is Cafe Havana. On Sunday, the cover charge is 40,000 pesos, but other nights it's 60,000. Inside, the back wall is covered in framed photos, and there's a big lit up bar in the middle with lots of hanging banners overhead. It's quite a funky old school decor. We went early and got a seat at the bar and a couple of Club Columbia beers to drink. 
while we watch the 10-piece band playing some upbeat Latin music. It didn't take long for people to get up and start moving, and before we knew it, there was a whole row of women dancing up front. Even Tom was really starting to feel the music. It was an absolutely incredible setting, making us feel that the cover charge was well worth the price. After a night at Cafe Havana, head over to Hetsemanes Plaza de la Trinidad, where there's lots of street food carts like Hamburguesas Gabriel. They have giant piles of meat on the grill, as well as a large tray of melted cheese, and specialize in massive burgers and hot dogs stacked up with toppings. But we preferred to get another one of their popular dishes, which has a base of fried plantain or patacones and lettuce, and is loaded with meat, shredded chicken, chorizo, butifara sausage, and ham. Wow, don't those look tasty? And it gets better. After adding the sauce, they cover it with a generous portion of melted cheese. And finally, they finish the patacones salchipapas with lots of fried matchstick potatoes, making for a humongous meal. We thought this was the best street food in Cartagena. It's perfect after a few drinks and is like the Colombian version of a poutine. Next, we'll head over to the Manga neighborhood to this street food stall right across from Parque La Cita Segovia, where we found these happy ladies serving traditional Colombian fried foods. So we ordered a couple of things in some very broken Spanish and lots of hand gestures, which thankfully they understood. We got the Caramagnola for 1,500 pesos, which is a delicious South American meat pie in a torpedo-shaped yuca fritter that's stuffed with various fillings. We also decided to get one of their arepas, which cost 3,500 pesos, and was a little crispy on the outside and filled with eggs and meat. It was tasty, but we preferred the Caramagnola. Also in Manga, in front of the Carulla Via Susana supermarket, we found this guy selling tamales, which is a popular Colombian dish, with a base of corn mash called masa, and is filled with various toppings such as cheese, beef, pork, or chicken. We hadn't tried one before, so we decided to give it a try. He cut open the corn husk, then portioned the masa into quarters, and finally he opened up one of his bags and added a nice big chunk of Colombian cheese on top top, which he also cut into quarters for us to make it easier to eat. This cheese tamale cost 4,000 pesos, and we thoroughly enjoyed it. We loved the corn flavor and could eat these all day. Nearby, there's the 18th century Fort San Sebastian del Pastelio, inside of which there's a great spot for dinner, called Restaurante Fuerte de San Sebastian del Pastelio, which is an upscale Caribbean restaurant. We made an early reservation so that we could choose which table we wanted on their spacious terrace, which features these cool alcoves where the fort's cannons would have gone, but now have these cute little private tables for two. After we looked through the menu, we enjoyed the spectacular view of the yacht club and the sun beginning to set across the bay. Then we started our meal with a couple of Club Columbia beers, as you might have guessed. It was a great way to cool down on a hot evening. Next, they served us a complimentary bread basket, which was followed by our main courses. I selected the Corvina fillet with a grilled green leek sauce, basil and lemon juice, served with crispy rice, sweet corn, tomatoes and sprouts. And we shared the fresh vegetables bowl, mixed in lemon dressing with roasted vegetables, eggplant escabeche, avocado, tomatoes, pickled onions, roasted pepper and mozzarella cheese. And Tom had the chicken roulette for his entree, which is a grilled chicken breast roll with eggplant caviar, sweet bell pepper pesto and roasted ripe plantain. The fish, the chicken, and the veggie dishes were all delicious. We really loved our meal here. Next, we'll head over to Cartagena's Walled City, to the Sofitel Santa Clara Hotel, which was formerly a 17th century convent, and now has a few spectacular restaurants and bars, like this stunning patio called Jardin Santa Clara. This secluded terrace is surrounded by an abundance of lush tropical greenery, making for a picturesque setting that we had all to ourselves. This time we had a couple of Aguila beers to begin our meal, and to our surprise, a few monks came out to light the candles around the terrace, and then the rest of the lights throughout the garden came on, creating an enchanting atmosphere. To begin, we were served a complimentary dish of fried plantain chips, along with a couple of dipping sauces. 
and for our main courses, I chose the duck confit and mushroom lasagna, which was smothered in cheese with fragrant tomato sauce and came with a side of Creole potatoes with chipotle aioli. And Tom ordered the char-grilled free-range chicken with hibiscus sauce and a side of Creole potatoes. Our dinner here was very memorable. Both the duck lasagna and the chicken were fantastic. We would definitely recommend Hardin Santa Clara. While at the Sofitel Legend Santa Clara Hotel, check out the spacious rooftop terrace called Botica Santa Clara Bar. It has a perspective of the Caribbean Sea on one side, and on the other where we sat, there's an impressive view overlooking the courtyard pool. Mike ordered a Club Columbia Michelada, which comes with lemon juice and a rim covered in salt and spicy peppers, and I just stuck with a regular Club Columbia for my drink. This was Mike's first time having a Michelada, and he was surprised by the mix of flavors around the rim, but he thought it was okay. He was glad he tried it, although he switched back to a normal Club Columbia beer afterwards. We love Botica Santa Clara Bar. It's the perfect place to grab a drink and relax on a hot night in Cartagena. Another rooftop that we quite liked was Mirador Gastro Bar. It's a bustling spot in the historic center of the walled city, with an amazing view of the clock tower. We ordered a couple of Club Columbia beers to start, and for our appetizer, we shared the Carancho Ceviche with fresh fish marinated in leche de tigre, corn, avocado, ripe banana, and grilled cheese. After that, for our mains, I got the vegetarian burrito with bell peppers, zucchini, mushrooms, grilled eggplant, cream cheese, and caramelized onions. And Tom decided on the Peruvian fish, which was the catch of the day in yellow chili sauce with shrimp and mashed potatoes. The Peruvian fish was quite flavorful, and we loved everything that we had here. Around the corner, there's also a beautiful terrace called Rooftop Urania. It's a scenic spot to have a Club Columbia beer on a hot night and watch the sunset over the domes and rooftops of the walled city. Just a short walk away is a popular eatery for lunch called Restaurante San Valentin. There's lots of greenery as soon as you walk in, and it looks upscale with raw stone walls, columns, and arches. To begin, Mike chose a watermelon juice, and I had a Club Columbia beer to drink. Then we shared this enormous dish, which is the fried seafood platter for two that came with breaded calamari, fish, shrimp, and patacones. It was almost as long as the table and tasted yummy, although we couldn't finish it in one sitting, so we took lots home. For dessert, we shared the caramel flan, which was just all right. We really enjoyed our meal and thought it was a great value. If you're looking for something delicious and nutritious, try a caimito or star apple fruit, which we had portioned into quarters and the skin sliced off so that we could eat it right away. This was our first time having a caimito fruit, so we're excited to see how it tasted. We both really liked the flavor. It was light and refreshing and was similar to a really juicy plum. Next is a little eatery called Pesitarian, where we went for an early lunch at this modern and bright restaurant and decided to get the Sushi Casa, which is a tower of sushi rice with salmon and tuna tatar, crispy shrimp with panko, avocado, and topped with crispy beetroot, as well as the shrimp curry bowl with creamy chickpea curry, plantains, carrots, onions, avocado, and rice. We shared both dishes, which were flavorful and tasted excellent. Another restaurant we'd recommend is just a couple steps down the street and is called Los Tacos del Gordo. We chose a seat right at the front window, which was perfect for people watching, and had the alotito parco to start, which is a bowl of sweet corn and chicharrones with cheese, sour cream, cilantro, and pickled onions. After that was the quesabiria tacos with slow-cooked beef ribs, roasted tomatoes, onions, mozzarella, and a cup of birria broth, as well as the pastor tacos with pork marinated for 24 hours, onions, cilantro, and roasted pineapple. We had a great meal and really liked all of the dishes that we tried here, especially the tacos, which were delicious, even though they were a bit messy, as you can see. Also on the same street in Centro is this fried foods cart called Pacho Fritos Light. When we got there, they were busy rolling out the dough, so we knew that everything would be fresh and ordered the deditos de queso, or cheese fingers, which was actually one of our favorite street foods in Cartagena. We could have eaten a hundred of these. 
Another food stall selling typical Colombian fried street foods is just down the road, where they were cooking some arepas in this pot of oil over a charcoal fire. We ordered one of their arepas, which cost 4,000 pesos, as well as a papas rellena, which is a South American deep-fried potato ball, which is stuffed with mashed potatoes and a savory meat filling. The arepa had an extra crispy corn dough exterior and was stuffed with meat and eggs. Both were super cheap and tasted wonderful, but I think the Papas Reina was our favorite. Next is a restaurant in Boca Grande called Arepas Pues, which has a beautifully lit back terrace, with vines covering the wall and a couple of mature trees that are decorated with funny Spanish signs and some animal carvings. We couldn't believe how many signs there were back here. We sat down at our table and ordered a couple of Aguila beers to start, followed by the Salchipapas Especial with french fries, sausage, lettuce, matchstick chips, sweet corn, castaño cheese, and chicken, as well as a couple of arepas. I had the mixed arepa with meat, chorizo, chicken, and cheese, and Mike got the pollo y maize arepa with chicken and corn. We had a great meal and loved the setting. Our favorite dishes were the chicken and corn arepa and the salchipapas, which were very tasty and reasonably priced. Well, we hope you enjoyed our Cartagena food tour. If you did, please like and subscribe and check out our best restaurants in Medellin video. And remember, take time to travel. Catch you on the next one.